Good afternoon and welcome to episode 895. And the topic today is going to be interesting again. I like doing the interesting topics and today we're going to talk about the um, ladies you don't need a man but it doesn't mean you want to become one and that unfortunately is something sent me a lot in our culture but I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to introduce myself first so you know what I'm about, why I do this stuff and why I'm passionate about this topic and then we'll get into the heart of the matter. So, hi, my name is Barry Selby. I'm an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women, which I'm very passionate about. And speaking of passion, I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is why I love supporting women in creating balance in love, life, and business. And being a passionate champion for the divine feminine is going to inform this talk, but also it's what inspired these talks almost three years ago, just under three years ago now, um, starting in 2016 called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. So today the topic's going to be um, juicy. Well, at least I think so. I don't know what it's going to look like yet. So that, again, this is episode number 895. If you haven't seen broadcast before, you know, I can tell you where to find the links at the back of the broadcast. Um, and I'm also going to post some links, I think, that will be useful to you if you find this topic of pro, pro, um, if you find this topic provocative. That's why I want to say it. So, the topic today is, ladies, you don't need a man. It doesn't mean you want to become one. And I know I'm going to speak from experience here. I can feel it already. We're in interesting times in this culture, to say the least. Now, some of this stuff is going to talk about what happened probably over the last 20, 30 years. But right now, in this moment, we're in interesting times of transition and shift from a largely patriarchal structure to a more, I would say, equal, well, no, that's a dangerous word to use, a more expansive viewpoint, I'll say it that way. Now, it may not be happening true in certain parts of the culture, but certainly the people I circle with and we talk about, this is becoming more prevalent where we have a more open understanding about equality and honoring differences, etc., etc. But if you're not in that culture, this talk may be useful to you. Actually, if you are in this culture, this topic may be useful to you. So for many women that I, and let me speak about ones I've dated first. <laughs> um, I've shared about this before, so it's not like it's an unusual topic, but I've shared before in past broadcasts where I've had, um, I won't say role reversal, but I've had some shifts in the relationship I was in where the women dominated the relationship. And I would say, frankly, that those women didn't dominate it as a choice, it was because they fell into the habit of being like men. And I'll explain about that more in a moment. But the experience was is that I didn't, I basically abdicated my role. I got lazy. And to be blunt, we men are easily lazy. But the, the piece of the puzzle I want to speak to is the fact that when women are in their masculine running the show, being like men copying the show, you know, let me delete the part about masculine because that's not what I'm talking about here. When, men are act, when women are acting like men, copying the men being like men, and basically becoming men, it's like they run the show the way men would run the show. And basically when men and women are meeting in romantic settings, it's like this because they're both attempting to be the one up or the one leading or the one taking charge. It's messed up to say the least. And in my past relationships, it was fun for a period of time, but ultimately it was messed up too. So ladies, if you're watching this from the point of view of being in that place yourself, consider for yourself where maybe you've actually taken charge in the relationship or I should say taken charge in life and actually chosen relationship from your place of ownership versus receiving it and bringing it in. And I'll break that down more in detail in a moment too. So the challenge has been for a lot of women, and I talked about this, well, I've talked quite a lot. Let me, let me put this on the table because I've talked about this before as well. The business world was created by men for men. Women have been trying to fit in ever since. And that's one of the reasons why women have been so trained and, um, what's the word I want to use? Because education is not the right word. But women have been, been um, almost by omission pushed in the position of being like the men in the business world. Yes, there was the whole stuff through the 60s and 70s when the women's liberation movement happened back in England, where Twiggy was the most famous woman in that movement who had sh squared shoulder pads sticking out on a jacket, flat chest, um, black, very flat makeup, and a short haircut. Basically looking like men. Because women were burning their bras and acting like men and copying the men. So there was a shift in our culture, Western world speaking, definitely in the 60s and 70s. But unfortunately, we haven't found balance yet. In fact, we're still in a place where women have taken on that habit, that approach, 
guess approach is safe for many, many years and haven't learned to turn it off. Now, that's not true for every woman. There are plenty of women out there I know now, thankfully, a lot of women in my circles are very much embracing their feminine strength, their feminine heart, their feminine fluidity in life, in business, and in a relationship. But I'm speaking to all those who haven't got there yet, because frankly, the majority of women haven't got this yet, and the majority of men haven't seen this either. So the shift I've talked about a lot between masculine and feminine is part of the work I talk about and part I've studied and learned myself, which changed my perspective, was to recognize when women are in their feminine, there actually is more power there. Most women have been trained to think that the men are more powerful, which is a lie and bullshit, just to be clear. In the business world, yes, men run the show because it's been built for them. So women have had a hard time fitting into that the way it's been built, the way it's been built which means the business world hasn't shifted yet to catch up with where we need to go. That's a whole other conversation. Maybe, let's see what comes up. So my perspective is adamant that the future is gonna be feminine led. Yes, I'm saying this out loud. <laughs> that when you women, when you women, when women in general recognize their gifts, their power, their talents, their resources, their strength is in the feminine, that they can be in the business world from a feminine place, because that's coming more often too, thankfully. That understanding that when women are in the feminine, they come together as support of each other. They're not competing. Competing is a masculine habit, by the way. So if you ladies are competing with each other or putting each other down, you copy the men too much. Again, stop being men. Ladies, if you are so independent, you don't need a man, you don't want a man, you don't care about having a man in your life because you just want to do it all yourself, you may have crypto with the line into too much, being, too much machoism being a man yourself. Um, I'm listening to any others, you might be a man if, or you might be acting like a man if, like the redneck jokes. So another principle for, for you ladies is that when you keep going out and doing, doing, doing to achieve results, getting things done, you're in your masculine and basically being like the men. Now, it can feel good to a degree. <clears throat> Unfortunately, you're going to burn out your system doing it. Ladies, you're not wired to work that way. And let me, let me qualify this. You're not wired to keep pushing, pushing, pushing. It's not good for you. Now, I'm not saying that women are weaker. What I'm saying is your strength is in other areas. And it's the thing that men don't get. As I said before, ladies, your power is not in competing, but collaborating. Your power is embracing the unity, is embracing a um, cooperation that changes the paradigm we play in. We men are nat not naturally trained to be together and collaboration. We tend to naturally compete divide to see who's better and to be better than somebody else. And ladies, you keep copying that. Stop it. <laughs> it's not your strength. In fact, it's not healthy for you either because the reality is this world is doomed to fail, whether it's climate change or whatever, if feminine leadership doesn't show up. Now, yes, leadership I'm talking about here. But the thing about feminine leadership is it isn't like one leading them all. It's about equality and about harmony and bringing everybody forward. It's like no one left behind. In some sense... Hmm. In some sense, that marine, um, you, the, the way the marines talk, I think the marines talk about this, seals, marines, probably both, that no man is left behind. In some ways, that's a feminine act because it's about including everybody, bring everybody back. I know it's different from what men do, but that idea about everybody's involved, everybody connected, everybody's collaborating, everybody's cooperating, that's the feminine strength. The second principle, by the way, ladies, is when you keep going and doing, 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 getting things done, Again, you're being like the men. That's the hunter energy you're putting out, which is what we do as men. When you remember your feminine strength, your feminine gifts, your feminine fluidity, and you start to learn, and you start to remember or learn, depending on where you are in your life, how to bring in what you want, to attract it in, to become a magnet for that which you want, intentionally, consciously, actively bringing it in, then you're in your feminine. It's actually a gift I'm kind of, I, well, I'll say, it's a gift I'm jealous of. Not, not jealous of, it's a gift I'm aware of that I can tap into when I tap into my own feminine too. This, by the way, let me qualify this because you haven't seen my broadcast before. Masculine and feminine are energetic principles or polarity perspectives. They generally line up with male and female. However, not always. And we all carry masculine and feminine within us. Doesn't matter what body type we're in. In fact, doesn't matter what, what sexuality preference you have. Doesn't matter what polarity you are. We, both, we all carry both masculine and feminine polarities. But again, ladies, when you are being like the men or you're becoming men, it's because you're too much in your masculine. And for most women, that's not natural. Now, again, generally speaking, men masculine, women feminine, but there are those 
individuals who are actually on the other side of the conversation, where there are men who are more naturally feminine, women are naturally uh, masculine. And again, that's independent of sexual preference. In fact, in gay relationships, that's still true. One partner is more masculine, one partner is more feminine, because it creates a polarity. I've talked about this before a lot of times. So the understanding of this polarity piece, of understanding the... Um, it's almost like a balance between the two is to recognize that you have access to both resources so ladies here's the thing you can wear the masculine shell the masculine mask to do things in the world for a certain degree but if you live that way and it becomes stuck that way which some women have got stuck that way it will not serve you and it will actually destroy you energetically speaking so I'm passionate about women knowing this because it changes your life when you recognize ladies that when you own your feminine or you release the masculine shell and embrace your true feminine you become much whole, more whole and you actually become healthier. The inverse is true for men, by the way. When we, are, we own a masculine, then we become much stronger at that place too. So, hi Susie. Yes, you, you may be a complete doer. A lot of women are. That's the challenge. And doing is a masculine, in a sense, and this is, this is really a sloppy alignment. But, and by the way, hi Susie, nice for, thanks for watching. Um, men generally are more... Um, Sorry, the masculine is more doing, the feminine is more being. Actually, no, it's not true. I've got to play with this because the thing is spiritual principles, the masculine is still the feminine's movement, so that's actually reversed. So it's an interesting quandary we have here because, and this may be sound contradict contradictory, but the masculine is about doing, doing, doing until we're done, and we're still. The feminine is about flow and movement and is embracing the journey, but it's almost like embracing the steps and the flow of what life is about versus got to get there, got to get there. Because the masculine energy we're doing to get a result the feminine is doing to participate different focus different viewpoints so in a relationship let's bring it back to relationships since it's my strength area when both partners are in the masculine which happens at certain times there is no chemistry <laughs> there's no sexual attraction and basically both are in the doing mode maybe you're digging the gardener maybe you're both you're both you're both doing mechanical stuff both both driving different cars you're in your masculine at the time. Again, for periods of time, it's okay, but not, don't live there. At home, you may be in a place where you're basically taking care of the baby and both, both he and you are in your feminine. Again, we have, both gen we have both planets inside of us and we move back and forward. But our natural residence and our true strength is in our authentic um, bias. You've been, in, hi, Suze, you've, been a, you've been in survival mode for a while now and you haven't been able to shift. I can probably help you with that, but we'll talk. Anyway, let me finish off. Let me... Add, let me Drop the finish this thought because it's coming through right now. At least it was. <laughs> uh, rewind, rewind, rewind. Masculine does to complete, feminine does to participate. Oh, polarity, yes. So we are both in masculine and feminine polarity. We have both available to us. Oh, this is the piece. Okay. One of the tips I recommend in something like one of my teachers for men and women in relationship, if you're in a relationship and you are in a, um, what's the word, like a, a straight relationship, I guess I'll use that as an example, but it works on other people too, is there's a choice you can make when you want to go to bed together, as in sexual int um, intimacy, is to have a choice where you actually take the time to embody your own polarity. Now this is, this is, a, this is an embodiment practice for when you're going to bed together, but it's also true about using this in your life as well. Because sometimes it takes a conscious effort. And so the suggestion is for this, this piece, if you're in the bedroom, ready to go to bed and have fun with each other, um, to add to your polarity, to add to your chemistry, to add to your attraction to each other, what each partner does is symbolically gather up all of the energy of the opposite polarity. So the man gathers up all his feminine energy and then gives it to his partner for her safekeeping. And she gathers up all her masculine energy, energetically speaking. And so this is all a symbolic, by the way, because this is not going to say you're going to match, match, make it happen, but it does tend to shift. When you go out with your masculine energy, you give it to your partner for safekeeping so he can hold it safe. What happens is you start to relax into your natural residence. And when you do that, it creates much greater polarity, which is what chemistry is based on, at least my belief, is that polarity, which is, again, if, for example, we naturally reside, say, I know I think I naturally reside around 70 30 split, 70% masculine, 30% feminine. And we have, we're on that spectrum, so it's a, it's a blend from 100% masculine, 0% feminine, to 100% feminine, 0% masculine. And we're somewhere on that spectrum. So it's an intention to move to the extremes of the spectrum. By so doing, we become much more um, 
aligned to that one end of the polarity spectrum, which makes creates more magnetism together. So I mentioned this as polarity is what creates chemistry. And if you imagine like magnets, a South Pole and South Pole don't tend to attract energetically, nor do North Pole and North Pole. But North and South Pole together become very attractive to each other because they are opposite magnet magnetic poles. Polarity, masculine and feminine is the same thing. Again, independent of gender, independent relationship. What attracts partners together is that polarity. You can be caught up in the physical approach and, the, and how somebody looks. I'm speaking deeper than that. So ladies, when you remember that your feminine strength is your power. Now, let me say it this way. <laughs> you know, it's mother nature, not father nature. So storms, um, earthquakes, typhoons, hurricanes, tornadoes, that's feminine energy in its authority. So ladies, never forget that you're that powerful. So take that one, take one to heart, there's a potent one. So in a relationship, the understanding is that ladies, you can be receptive, you can be in your um, attracting mode. Doesn't mean you're weak. In fact, you're more powerful because you're not able to put out all the energy. When the man is putting all the energy out to lead, to be the masculine, to take charge, he's using up energy. So ultimately, you're stronger than him because you're working less. That's a little secret, by the way. So the understanding of this polarity piece has got so many nuances and, and, and aspects to it. So I'm actually going to refer you to some of my other talks because I'm covering aspects and dipping into pieces that belong somewhere in other, or I should say, are sp spoken about in other talks. So I'll give you links for those in a moment. So I'm going to put out two things for you, just to just to um, invite you to check these things out, because I think I've given you enough to understand the polarity piece and where you stand and how you can shift. Ladies in particular, when you remember that you're feminine based, when you're feminine sourced, when you're tapped into life energy itself, you can tap in by doing things and just some quick examples of the things you do. When ladies, when you go to yoga, especially or dancing or free movements or even go shopping, these tap you into your feminine heart. For men. We tap in when we do when we are either very still or we go do masculine things like chopping wood or hunting or hiking, those sort of things. That's more of a masculine and energetic because it's goal orientation. So understanding the difference in how you can recharge your batteries is a useful thing to have. So ladies, if you're single and you're having some challenges in a relationship, maybe because of this piece, I have, I have a couple of things I want to invite you to check out because these will help you dramatically. Um, as I mentioned, one of your gifts, ladies, is to attract what you want versus go hunting for it, checking it down, killing it energetically speaking that's the power you have is when you attract because when you pursue you're copying the men you're eliminating the men you're taking over the man's job as i mentioned at the beginning so i have a course called attract the man you want because it really is that simple well <laughs> simple isn't always easy but it's simple in terms of the fact that it's a very basic understanding that when you attract what you want it shows up so what i've got this course is designed for you to have the ability to attract what you want if you're a single one more attract relationship i recommend it highly and if you want to go deeper and have a conversation of seeing where you are and where you're stuck, I'll also put a link in the comments to have a chat with me. So I'll put a link in the comments for my Attract the Man You Want course. I'll also put a link in the comments to have a chat with me because if you're stuck and you're not sure where to go and maybe you're stuck in your masculine too much, we can sit down and have a talk by phone and I can help you get some clarity, some guidance, and then see if we want to work together, just to be clear. Um, that may involve coaching, just to let you know. So I'll put the link in the comments. Um, Just so if I want to put something else in the comments as well. Um, I mentioned my book. Mm, that you can find on my website. My website, website by the way, is money barrysilver.com. But I will put a link in the comments for my new course starting Friday because it's coming up very soon, which is um, called, called Thriving Through the Holidays. Because actually, it fits in this talk, yeah. So, ladies, when you're busy doing stuff, you, start, you forget to be able to receive and enjoy your home life when you go home for Thanksgiving. If you're finding yourself stressed out because of the holidays, this is for you. This is true for actually for men and women, but this is particularly for the ladies. Thriving Through Holidays will work for you really well. I'll put the link for that and you can check it out for yourself. Sign up, there's a free gift in there and check it out for yourself. Um, that's a good, that's, that's three. That's good, that's good to keep you going. All right, so this is a series of talks I've done called Messages to the Masculine. It means there's other talks besides this. This is number 895. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, you can always join me on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. Or you can watch me live at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before and you want to watch my replays, you can go to my business page on Facebook, which is uh, barryselby.author, and you can like my page and you can watch them there, although most of the broadcasts seem to be um, unlisted. It's the way Facebook works, or doesn't work. But if you go to my business page, excuse me, if you go to my YouTube channel, even better, because you'll find all my talks there. If you go to, so YouTube channel is Barry Selby, as most of my social media is that. And if you go to youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, you can follow, you can actually subscribe to me there, not follow, subscribe. 
There's a playlist on there called Messages to the Masculine where I keep all my talks. You need to scan through the titles, finding other talks that speak to these areas if this is what you're focusing on. 895 talks. There's plenty of content for you to work through. Um, so with that, I think I've given you everything. So you've got the replays. I'll put links in the comments that I mentioned for those three things. And I invite you to check them out. This is maybe pivotal for you. It may be a whole understanding for you. and It may be challenging for you. If you're stuck in this area and you've got some need for support, reach out to me. Either over message over social media or click one of the links in the comments that I'll put up in a moment and uh, get the help you want. I do appreciate you being with me as always. Take these messages to heart. Take these thoughts to heart. Take this reminder to heart. You can have what you want when you allow the reception to come in, when you allow yourself to receive what you want and become an attractive magnet for that you really want. That is where things really thrive. Having said all that, I appreciate you being with me as always. I will see you again tomorrow, same, cha same time, same channel, 5 p.m. Pacific time. I thank you for being with me as always, and I'll see you again soon. Once again, please take care of yourself. I'll see you soon. Bye.